Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. This week, Andrew brings you highlights from the 2022 Healing is Here conference held at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado. And now, here's Andrew. On today's Gospel Truth, I'm going to be uh, playing one of my teachings from the Healing is Here conference that we did in 2022. 22. It was powerful. We saw hundreds and hundreds of people healed. And I think that this teaching I did on healing is going to be a blessing to you. So listen to it. And also at the end of the program, we'll be sharing with you about how you can get a copy of not only this teaching, but all of the Healing Is Here Conference 2022. You know, the Lord is always with us, but He isn't always manifest. Uh, I believe this is, I've never heard anybody else say this, but I believe all that the anointing is, is just a manifest presence of God. He's always with us, but he's not always in manifestation. Most of it's because of us, because we're carnal and aren't looking for him through spiritual things. We're looking in the natural realm. But there is a manifest presence of God here today. It's already happening. God's power is manifest. And I believe that whatever it is that ails you, God is going to set you free, but it doesn't happen sovereignly without your cooperation. And so we're going to be sharing a lot of things with you. And I'm just saying some of these things in preparation. But you know, I have prayed for tens of thousands. I don't even know how many people. I've seen a lot of great miracles happen and stuff. And in the beginning, it was all about trying to get you to a crescendo where your faith was at a place to believe. And then we'd pray and we'd see a miracle happen. As I've gotten older and since we've started the Bible school, now my ministry is primarily focused on trying to get you how to believe on your own. And a lot of what's going to happen this week is going to be people that are teaching you how they received healing without somebody laying hands on them. Now, that's not the only way to receive. And not everybody is at a place where they can receive like that. And God loves you so much, He's going to reach you every way. So that's the reason we got people here. Uh, Ashley and Carly are really strong, laying hands on and imparting. So are the Hartmans. And of course, Richard Roberts has a gift that I don't have uh, of healing. You know, the Bible talks about gifts, plural, of healing. And so, We're going to be praying for you. We're going to be imparting to you, but also we're going to be teaching you how to receive directly from God. And this has become a real focus of mine uh, the older I get, because, you know, I've got an expiration date. We aren't going to be around forever, but the Word of God and these truths are around forever. And if we can teach you how to believe God and receive, there is nothing that you can get through somebody else that you can't get directly from God if you understand the Word of God. And so we're going to be having multiple ways of ministering healing to you. And I just encourage you to open up your heart and don't just wait on the times where somebody is praying for you. Yes, we're going to do that and we're going to help you. You know, it's kind of like if your car battery is dead, you know what you do? You you drive up another car and you put those jumper cables on there. Well, these are our jumper cables. And if your battery's low, we're going to lay hands on you and help jumpstart you. But ultimately you need to get to where you can start your own engine. Amen. Where you can release the power of God. So we're going to be doing all of this. And I just encourage you to open up your heart and receive from God. There is no bad way to be healed, but I would have to believe that knowing how to receive healing directly from God on your own has to be the best because I'm not available all the time. I don't want you coming by my house. (laughs) So I want to share with you from the book of Ephesians chapter one and, uh, I'm going to be ministering multiple times this week. So this is just the beginning of things. But here, you know, I love the book of Ephesians because it's written from a different perspective than what most people have. Most people believe that God has power, that he can do something, but that he has done nothing yet. But the book of Ephesians, the first three chapters are all about what has already taken place. The last three chapters are about because God has already done all of these things. Now, this should be your response. And so, yes, 
There are things that we have to do, but we don't do things in order to get God to move. God has already moved through Jesus and everything is about us learning how to receive. And I could literally preach on the first couple of verses here for days. I've done it in the past. So this is not an exaggeration. I'm going to have to skip through some things. But in chapter one, verse three says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us. It didn't say who can bless you, who will bless you. He has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we could apply this to every part of the Christian life, but we're here talking about healing and the Lord has already healed you. He's already placed raising from the dead power on the inside of you. And most people just have a disconnect because they think, well, man, it's obvious that I'm not healed because they can feel the pain. They can go in their mirror, look in their mirror and they can see that they're still sick. They go to a doctor and the doctor tells them they're sick. And most people are more moved by what they feel and what they, what a test would reveal than they are by what God's word says. And they think, how can this be? Because you are not only a body and a soul, you're also a spirit. And in the spirit realm, you already have the supernatural raising from the dead power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, and every one of these things, if you just continue on in the fourth verse, it says, according as he hath chosen us in him. He is not choosing you. He has already chosen you before you were ever born, before the foundation of the world. God already chose you. God has already done this. In verse five, having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by him. You're already predestinated. In verse six, to the praise of his glory, it's already done. To whom we have redemption. In verse seven, it's already done. Your redemption is already complete. Did you know that in the spirit, your, the word redeemed is a word that has become religiousized. It's become Christianized and most people don't think about what it means, but it means to buy back and it is saying that you have redeemed what God purchased for you. You are redeemed. Uh, let me use this. When I was a kid, we had S and H green stamps. I'm older than a lot of you in here. And many of you don't know what S and H green stamps are. But when you bought groceries, they'd give you these green stamps and they'd give you a book and you'd paste them in there. And when you got enough books, you could go to a redemption center is what they called it. And you could trade in those green stamps for what you wanted. And I mean, you could get anything. You could get dishes and uh, all kinds of stuff, lamps, uh, appliances. There was just, it was basically just a store. And, but you had to have these green stamps and then you went and redeemed them. So you didn't really want the stamps. The stamps were just a representative that you had spent some money and they gave you these stamps in return. What you wanted was to redeem them for something. So uh, you had purchased stuff. The green stamps proved that you had purchased something, but you had to redeem them before it really did you any good. Well, it's the same thing. Jesus purchased us spirit, soul, and body. But the only part of you that is redeemed right now is your spirit. Your spirit is completely redeemed. Your spirit is the same spirit that it will be in eternity. It's not going to be improved upon. It's not going to be, uh, you know, you're going to have to get your spirit cleansed from other defilement down here. Your spirit is sealed in verse 13. I'm going to skip over this. I'll preach on this. I'm trying to get onto some other stuff, but your spirit was created perfect. It's redeemed. It's the exact same spirit you're going to have throughout eternity. You aren't going to get another spirit or a better spirit. And then you were sealed, vacuum packed by the Holy Spirit, verse 13, so that when a Christian sins and fails, it enters into your body and it enters into your soul, but it doesn't penetrate the seal around your spirit. Your spirit is redeemed. But we are waiting for the redemption of the purchased possession. And it talks about the Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Earnest means that it's a down payment. 
An earnest means that you've given something in token that you are going to do it, but you haven't completely done it yet. If you put money down on a house, you know, earnest money, you haven't purchased a house yet, but you've put enough money down to say that you're serious and that you are going to do it. So the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Well, it, it just said here, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Your sins are already forgiven and your spirit is already redeemed. You've already got what Jesus purchased for you in your spirit, but you are waiting for the redemption of your soul and your body. They haven't been redeemed yet. They've been paid for. Someday we are going to receive a glorified body and we will know all things, even as also we are known, but that hasn't happened yet. The only part of you that is redeemed is your spirit man, which you can't see, taste, hear, smell, or feel. You have to go to the word of God. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You have to look in the word of God to see what's going on in the spirit realm. And in the spirit realm, your spirit is already redeemed, but your body and your soul are not redeemed. They're purchased, they're sealed, but they haven't been redeemed. And so we are waiting for the redemption of that purchased possession. I tell you what I've already said here, if you haven't understood what I've said, you need to get my teaching on spirit, soul, and body because this would explain it in better detail. But the Christian life isn't trying to get God to give you something else. The Christian life is is understanding what you have in the spirit and learning how to release it. There's a, there's a world of difference. There's a world of difference in approaching God is, oh God, I have nothing. I am nothing and I can do nothing, but I believe that you can do all things. Please touch me. <laughs> You're starting from a position of failure when the truth is that you've already got everything in Christ. To approach him and appropriate what is already yours is much easier than trying to get God to give you something that you don't have. That's a mouthful. Man, you, I could preach on that for a long time. But let's look at verse 15. Here's where I was wanting to get to. He prays a prayer for you. There's two prayers prayed in the book of Ephesians. And we know that Paul was praying according to the will of God. It says over in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then whatsoever we've asked, we know that we have the petition. So if you can find something that you know is God's will, you can pray it and know that God hears you and answers your prayer. So this is, these are two prayers in the first chapter and the third chapter that Paul prayed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So we know this is God's will. You can pray these prayers, put your name in there and know that God has heard and answered this prayer. So I'm encouraging you. I'm kind of setting the, the uh, table for the rest of this conference. And I'm asking you that you would pray this prayer and not come just waiting on one of us to give you healing. Now, again, we're going to pray for you and we're going to help those of you who your battery is low, amen. And we're going to jumpstart you and we're going to do everything we can to help you. But I'm praying that you would receive this prayer and open up your heart so that God can show you what you already have in Christ. It's not out there. It's not just in Richard Roberts or in Audrey Mack or in Barry Bennett or any one of us. It's in you. Did you know that every one of us, I'm going to say something here that most people just cannot swallow this, but it's absolutely true. Did you know that every one of us are identical in the spirit? We have the same born again spirit. It is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that is sent into our heart. Romans 8, 9 says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you are born again, if you are one of his, then you have the spirit of Christ. You have the exact same power, wisdom, knowledge, forgiveness, everything. All of us are identical in the spirit. The only difference is how much we've renewed our mind and how much we've manifested it in our actions and things like that. But we all have the exact same potential. There is nobody who God just created to be a dud. 
this whole concept of clergy and laity where the clergy has a corner on God and God ministers to them and talks to them and flows through them differently than other people. That is a wrong concept. Every one of us are children of God. Every one of you have the fullness of the Godhead living in you bodily. Every one of you have the ability to see all of these miracles happen. Jesus said, verily I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Every one of us have the exact same potential, but we're in varying degrees of understanding it, cooperating with it, and learning how to use it and flow in it. So here he is praying a prayer for you. And again, let me just point this out, that most people, their prayer is always asking God to do something. Paul's prayer is asking God just to give us a revelation of what he's already done. Radical difference. You know, if somehow or another, it, you could be told that you were going to write a prayer down for people 2,000 years in the future and they would be reading your prayer. How would you pray for them? I've been around a lot of people praying and I can tell you most people would be praying something like, oh God, just pour out your spirit. God, do a new thing. God, send revival, send an awakening. God, and we're always asking God to do this. Paul's prayer is exactly opposite. God, show them what you've already done. And I know some people think I'm splitting hairs and that this is just a technicality, but see, this really reveals what's in your heart. If you believe that God hasn't done it yet, then there's a chance that he may not do it. But once you understand that it's already done, that I've got it, it's in here somewhere. Man, that's different. That's like being told that you got a million dollars buried in your backyard. I may not know where it is. I don't know how deep it is. And if all I got is a spoon, it may take me a long time to find that. But man, if I've got one of these great bulldozers, I can find it quicker. But man, if I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was a million dollars in my backyard, I guarantee you I'd find it. <laughs> but see, most people don't know that they already have it. They think that maybe they can get it. And if they try and don't see something, they just lose heart and get discouraged. So Paul is praying a prayer for you here in verse 15. He says, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And if you want to split hairs in the eighth verse, he's already abounded towards all wisdom and power. You've already got this wisdom. He's, he's just praying here that he would draw it out. You've got it in your spirit, but it needs to come out into your physical realm. And uh, so you've already got this. He's just praying that that spirit of wisdom and revelation. Did you know that the word revelation here is, it means to disclose is what the Hebrew word says, or to take off the lid. You've already got it, but with most people it's covered. Your physical body, your mind covers and blinds us to these things. You know, this morning I was studying in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and the Old Testament law, it said, was a veil over people's face and they couldn't see the glory of God as long as they were living under that Old Testament law. That is a, it veils, it puts a lid on the things of God. Most of us don't think spiritually, we think in the natural. We're what the doctor says is more real to us than what God says because we live in the physical, natural realm instead of in the spirit. And yet the key to the Christian life is learning how to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. So he's just praying that he would take off the lid of what you've already got. And in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Man, I could preach on nearly every word of this. This has become really revelation to me. You know, the word understanding here is the Greek word dianoia. It's the same word that's used in Ephesians 4, 17, many different places. And it's the same word that was translated imagination in Luke chapter one, verse 51. Did you know your understanding is your ability to see something? 
with your heart that you can't see with your eyes. Your imagination, you know, wherever you parked, did you know that you're, it's your imagination that tells you where you parked? You know, we got a parking garage out here that can park 1,022 cars. Man, if you had to just go out and walk up and down the aisle until you found your car, did you know it would be a real pain? But every one of you knows where you've parked. You've got an image. You can see it. You may not remember the exact spot, but you know if it's on the second level, third level, if it parked out here or wherever, you've got an image. That's your imagination. And this says that he's praying that your eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your imagination would be open so that you can see something with your heart that you can't see with your eyes. Man, that's powerful. I got a great teaching on the power of imagination. I'm not going to teach on it right now, but it would be really good. You've got to see yourself well before you see yourself well. You know, I know many of you have heard this. I just going to say it real quickly about a guy that prayed for a woman who was nearly blind, told her to take her glasses off, prayed for her, And then he said, now can you see? So she started to open her eyes and he said, shut your eyes. And he did that three times. And she was wondering, what's he saying? Finally, he says, you've got to see yourself seen before you see. And so finally she kept her eyes closed, prayed in tongues. And she says, I can see it. And he says, now open your eyes. And she opened her eyes and her eyes had been healed. But see, there's so many people that come to a service like this and you're praying for healing but have you seen yourself healed? There's many of you that see yourself sick and you're hoping that all of the sickness, the pain, everything will just be gone and you're waiting to see that and you aren't going to really rejoice and proclaim that you're healed until you can see it, until you can feel it. But you can get to where you embrace these things in your heart, where the eyes of your understanding are in line and you see yourself healed when there isn't any proof in the physical. Now, ultimately, you got to get the physical to match up or you're going to go to be with Jesus. So I'm not saying that the physical isn't important. It is, but I'm saying it, you conceive miracles. You don't, the stork doesn't just bring them. You don't go and just have somebody else lay hands on you and get your miracle. You need to conceive your miracle. And the way you do it is by having the eyes of your understanding enlightened. Man, that is powerful. On today's broadcast, Andrew shared a portion of the 2022 Healing is Here conference. I would really encourage you to get the entire Healing is Here conference that we had. It was awesome. And this is a USB that has the entire conference on there, all of the testimonies, teaching and everything. And then we have CDs and also DVDs. And I tell you, this was powerful. We saw hundreds and hundreds of people healed. God wants you well, but He sent His Word and healed them. You need to get these truths. I promise you to change your life. The Healing Is Here conference is available in its entirety in a CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive, which includes both audio and video. These valuable resources were recorded live from the conference and are each available for $49 when you contact us. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this product. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software, The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. 
Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Okay, so here's our construction update, the end of October, 2022. We've got a lot of construction going on. And so they've got everything excavated where the student housing is going down to the subgrade. And they've actually got some of the foundations ready to pour. We're just waiting on a permit. So right where we are is where the road will connect with our parking garage. And this road is now two grade. And this is the road that'll go to our student housing. We've got a total of six units right here. Unit D will be the very first one that we build, but right over this little pile of dirt down in there, they've already got that excavated down to the level that they could start pouring the uh, foundations already. So, so here we are where uh, units E and F of our student housing is gonna be. Okay, and so you can see that they've excavated down here so that they're at the basement level on these units. But over here, uh, building D, which will be the very first one that we build, they've already got it excavated so that all I gotta do is when we get the permits is put up the forms, pour the concrete. That's it. And you got that done. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And the students thank you and praise God. The kingdom of God is being blessed because of what you're doing. excited. God is going to do something special during these meetings. The conferences are great. You're going to get a chance to meet people from all over the country, all over the world. Andrew's materials are here and the speakers are phenomenal. He's removed your sins as far as the east is from the west. You are now the righteousness of God and you got to quit looking at yourself in the natural and you got to see yourself in Christ. See, that's truth. You can feel the truth coming out and you can feel your spirit saying, this is the truth. Andrew's teaching and the love that he has for God's Word and truth. It is the gospel truth. Did you know that we have over 200,000 hours of free material on our website? I mean, you if you were to watch every single day for eight hours a day, it would take you over 22 years to go through all of that and it's free. We do have some things for sale, but we have a great website. I encourage you to check it out, awmi.net. We've got television programs, radio programs. We've got videos. We've got teaching. We've got books on there, just all kinds of things. Check it out, awmi.net. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish. Did you know Andrew Womack Ministries is on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest? We pray that we can bless you with the Word of God wherever you are in the world on any of these platforms. Follow Andrew on social media today.